I know that I said our break will resume after 10 past, but because of that one exercise, we're studying early at five past. Um, then we will continue and do the basic probabilities from 10 past until half past, and then we do a lot of other exercises for the remainder of the session. Okay, any volunteer? Anybody? You don't want to talk to me. Sam Anyone? Okay. Sam. Okay, Sam. Okay. Number one. Pastor, number one, find the probability of B happening. Mm -hmm. as, as, and then on our, the given that we do not, uh, we have the complement of B, mm -hmm. which is 0, 0,5. And then we know that for a complement, for, for probability of B, is equal to the one minus uh, complement of B. Yes. That is one minus 0, 0, 0.5. Yes. So the answer is 0, 0,5. The probability of B is 0, 0,5. The probability of B is 0, 0,5. Great. Then. That made it easier for us to find probability of A or B because now we have probability of B. I then substituted probability of A with 0 0.4. Sorry about my pen for skipping out. Yes. And then the probability of B 0 0.5. Yes. And then we are given probability of A and B, which is 0,1. Then my answer is 0, 0,8. Yes. The last but one? The, the last three, the key way there is mutual exclusive. So we know mm -hmm. if it is mutual exclusive, a probability of A and, and B is equal to zero. Therefore, okay. on, the, on the formula above, uh, we'll only have probability of A plus probability of B. Yes. Which is equal to 0, 0,4 plus 0, 0,5. The answer is 0, 0,9. Happy, everybody? Any question? Anyone with a question? No, happy. Great. And that's how you're going to find the questions. They're not going to be as straightforward as we we do when we do when I, 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 I unpack the concept. But when we do the exercises, I will try and use the examples um, as per the questions you get in your exam or the question you get in your assignment so that you become familiar with the steps on how you can Tangle those questions. Okay. Now let's look at conditional probability. And it is 10 past one. We can look at conditional probabilities. By the end of this session of 30 minutes, we should know how to calculate the conditional probability. We should know how to define what, how we deal with independent events and how we apply the multiplication rule. All of them, they relate to conditional probabilities. Okay, what are conditional probability? A conditional probability is a probability that I give, um, it's when you calculate the probability of A given that probability another event has happened before. So let's say, if I want to calculate the probability of me ordering coffee after I had a dessert, I will have to use the conditional probability because it will tell me that what will be the probability that I will order dessert given that, oh sorry, I will order coffee given that I had a dessert. And that's what conditional probabilities are all about. 
is the probability given that another event has already happened. <clears throat> so let's say we want to calculate the probability of A given B, and that will give us the probability of a joint event of A and B divided by the probability of B. So we're always going to divide by the given probability. So it will be the joint probability of A and B divided by the given probability, which is the probability of, or the given event, which is the probability of B. And that will calculate your conditional probability of A given B. And we can also find the probability of B given A, which is the joint probability of A and B divided by the probability of a, which is also states that it's the conditional probability of B given that A has already occurred. You know that the joint probability A and B is your joint probability. The probability of A is your marginal probability or your, your simple event, the same as the probability of A is your simple event or your joint or your marginal event probability. So how do we then use this? Let's say we have a statement that reads as follows. Of the people who were hired, 27% of them have been promoted in the past two years, 80% of them are men, and 24% of them are both men and they are promoted. So in this statement, we are given three values, which are all probabilities. What is the difference between what I am given now and the previous ones? The previous examples that we use, for example, if I go back, I know that I'm going way, way, way back. Uh, let's say from this. These are events. Different events are whole numbers. The 300s and the 200s, these are events. If they have given us the events, we would have divided them by the grand total, how many in total there were people who are hired in that company. If there were 1,200, we will divide by 1,200 in order for us to calculate those events. So, these are the probabilities as we have been calculating them. So the probability, the simple, event probabilities and the joint event probability. So if we read the statement, 27% have been promoted. Therefore, it means this is the probability of promoted, which is a simple event. And 80% are men. So this is probability of men, which is a simple event. And 24% are both men and promoted. This is a joint event of men and promoted. And since we know these probabilities, then we can draw a contingency table. It, it is easy. So if you draw a contingency table, you will say on your contingency table, if this is uh, promoted, promotion, and not promotion, and these are men, and this will be women, as we had it before. And this will be women. To get the probability of promoted, I know that that is the probability of promoted. It will be 0, 0,27. We can divide the percentage by 100. It will take us to decimal places. The probability of men will be 0, 0,27. Eight zero. I know that the sum of all probability, which is the probability of a sample space, will always be equals to one because the sum of all probabilities should be equals to one. And remember, this is where you calculate your totals. That's why I'm able to know where to place those simple probabilities. The last one is the joint probability, probability of men and promoted, and that is men and promoted, which is 0, 
if you look at this table, it's half complete. It, it is easy to complete the whole table because the whole table, I have all the other values. So for example, 0, 0.27 is zero, it's a complement of women is male. And to get that, I can just say 0, 0.27 minus 0, 0.24 should give us 0, 0,03 because 0, 0,24 plus 0, 0,03 should give us 0, 0,27. And since I know that the probability of the sample space is equals to 1, therefore 1 minus the complement of a simple event probability promoted will be 1 minus 0, 0,27, which is zero comma seven three and you can do that for the whole table so also here i can complete this whole table zero comma eight point eight minus point minus point two four will give us zero comma five six and zero comma seven three minus zero comma five six And I can get 0, 0,17. And 1 minus 0, 0,80 is the same as 0, 0,20. And there is my contingency table, and I can answer any questions that they ask. And which is the same as what I have there. Where 0, 0,27, our simple event promoted, 0, 0,80, our simple event main, 0, 0,24, which is the joint event, and the rest of the other values, I can quickly calculate them. Because if I have those three values, I can complete the whole contingency table. What if the question asks calculate the probability of men and promoted? We know that the joint probability formula is the probability of A given B is given by the joint event of A and B divided by the probability of B. So if I want to calculate the probability of men given that they are promoted, then it will be the joint event of men and promoted divided by the probability of promoted because we always divide by the given probability. The joint event promoted is 0, 0,24 divided by promoted, the probability of promoted, which is that probability of promoted, which is 0, 0,27, which gives us the probability or the conditional probability of men given that they are promoted is 0,89%. Oh, it's 0, 0,89 or 89 percent. Calculate the probability. That's your exercise. What is the probability of women given that not promoted? And this is your not promoted and that is your women. What is the probability of women? given that not promoted. We know that that is given by the joint probability of women and not promoted divided by the joint, the simple probability of not promoted. The joint event of women not promoted, women not promoted is 0, 0,17. Divide by the probability of not promoted will be 0, 
0,73. And that will give us 0.17 divided by 0.73 is equal to 0, 0,23. When we look at the conditional probability formula, so remember that the probability of A given B is given by the joint probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. If we apply what we call the multiplication rule, it is because they would have given us the probability of a given probability or the conditional probability of A given B, they would have given us that value they would have given us the simple probability, which is the probability of B, but they will want us to find the probability of A and B. In order for us to find the probability of A and B, we can just cross multiply the probability of B, which then tells me that if I cross multiply, if I cross multiply, then I will end up having the probability of A will be the conditional probability times the probability of B. Please note the following. If and only if they tell you that event A and B are independent, then the conditional probability of A and B will be the same as the probability of A because the probability of B has no bearing on what happens or does not influence what happens to the probability of A. Remember, the probability of A given B is given by the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. So if A and B are independent, therefore, that, oh, sorry, if A and B are independent, then the probability of B has no bearing on the probability of B. Or, or the probability of given B has no bearing on what happens to the probability of A. Therefore, this statement doesn't stand. It's the same as the probability of A. That is, if and only if they tell you that event A and event B are independent, then it would mean that if we go back to our conditional probability, and we want to find the probability of a joint probability of A and B. If we want to find that probability of A and B, given that they are giving us the probability of A given B, because A and B are independent, therefore the probability of A and B will just be the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. This only applies for independent events only for independent events. Let's say, for example, they, they give you event A and B, but they are not independent. They ask you to calculate the probability of A. Remember? The pro sorry, they ask you to calculate the probability of A and B. Remember the following. If they ask you to calculate the probability of A and B, it is the joint probability if it's not independent, is the joint probability of A and B will be equal to the number satisfying the joint event divided by N. You must not get confused between the two. This is when not independent. If it's not independent, the joint event of A and B is calculated by using the event satisfying a and B divide by the sample state. But if A and B are independent, then the joint event of A and B is given by the probability of A times the probability of B. Here is your exercise. 
And this will conclude our conditional probability. Same as what we did before we went to break. In the exam, they will give you a statement that reads, calculate the probability, or if the probability of B is equal to 0 0.2, the probability of A complement is 0 0.7, and the probability of A given B is 0 0.9, which is the conditional probability. And you need to find the probability of B given A. So they will give you multiple statements. One of the statements will say which one is the incorrect one, and they will give you the answer for the probability of B given A. From those statements, you need to know how to find the probability of B given A. The first step that you need to do to answer this question is to find the probability of A because they haven't given you the probability of A because you will need it to answer this question. Why? You need to do that. Remember, this is the probability of B given A. So to find the probability of B given A, to change the color of my pen. To find the probability of B given A is the probability of a joint event of A and B divided by the given probability, which is the probability of A. In order to find that probability of A is not given on the statement, you need to first find that probability of A. What else are you not given? You are not given the probability of A and B. Therefore, you need to go find the probability of A and B. How do you find the probability of A and B? You are given the conditional probability of A given B. How did they find that, that answer? They found this answer by using the probability of the probability of A and B divide by the probability of B. Therefore, it means 0, 0,9 will be equals to that because that is your conditional probability. So your probability of A given B, A given B is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. And then you need to go find the probability of A. Therefore, it means you must use the multiplication rule to find the probability of A and B. Once you have the A and B and you have the probability of A, then you can only find the probability of B given A. And remember, this is one option of many options in your answer. Option A might give you the probability of A. Option B might give you the probability of A. Option C might give you the probability of B and B. Remember, you're looking for the correct or incorrect answer in your assignment or in your exam. So you will need to know how to answer each statement. But to find only that one option, correct answer, you need to know how to do step number one, step number two, in order for you to get to the answer you are looking for. That is your exercise. I'm going to give you some time to do it. And then we will come back and do it together. So at 25-2, I will ask you to, to work it out together. Always remember to keep your mics muted all the time. Only unmute when you ask a question or you answer a question. Or you need to comment.
Okay, anybody who wants to volunteer to assist the rest of the class, you can just unmute yourself and let's work it out together. Sam? Okay, Sam, so it seems like you, will, you and I will be coordinating these classes going forward. Um, <laughs> Okay. Okay, I started with number one, find the probability of A. Mm -hmm. Since we are not given probability of A, then we have a uh, probability of complement of A. I said it's one minus probability of com uh, complement of A, one minus 0 0.7. And I got 0 0.3. Number two, I use the formula that you gave us there for probability of A given B, because we already have O, o, o 9 there. And then we have a O, o 2 for probability of B. So I used uh, probability of A given B scores to probability of A plus A and B over probability of B. Sorry? The probability, or you are here? Yes, I'm there. Oh, I'm very forward. Sorry. So it's fine. So I have O comma nine. Okay. It equals to probability of A and B over O comma two. Then I cross multiply O comma nine by O comma two to get the probability of A and B. The answer is O comma one eight. Sorry. 
Okay. Then it was easier for me to find probability of B given A because I have okay. all the figures now. Over probability of A is equals to O comma one eight divided by O comma three. The answer is O comma six. And that's how you find the probability yes. of B given A if you are given the probability of A given B. Any questions? If there are no questions, then we move to the independence. Two events are independent if and only if we already covered some of this. The probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A or the probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B. These two statements, you can use them to verify if two events are independent or dependent on each other. Event A and B are independent when the probability of one event does not affect the other event from happening. And that's independent. For example, using the same values that we had previously, we can determine whether a event A and B are independent, and we can also determine if they are mutually exclusive. So for example, if event A and B are independent, we need to find that the probability of A given B should be the same as the probability of A. The probability of A given B is 0 0,9. The probability of A we did find the probability of A previously, it was 0, 0,3, which is the complement of that, which is 0, 0,3. Therefore, they are not independent because they are not the same. Are event A and B mutually exclusive? Therefore, is the event A and B equals to 0? We did find that information because we did calculate it. We said the probability of A and B is 0, 0,18. So the probability of I'm A and B is equal to 0, 0,18. Therefore, not mutually exclusive. Yes, you can ask. Um, actually, from the pre previous slide, I think you are moving a little bit fast. Hello? Yes, okay. yes like the, the, uh, No, not this one. The previous one again. Yes, yeah. Um, I did not really get how did you work out the 0 0.8? So remember... Zero, the sorry, 0 0.18. Yes, remember the probability of A given B, which is 0 0,9. How did they find it? They used the formula, the probability of A and B divide by the probability of A, because if we know, this is the conditional probability formula. Yes. Let me use a pointer. So this is your formula. Yes. The probability of A given B is given by the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Our probability of given, we know that is 0, 0,9. We substitute that into the formula. Okay. The probability of A and B, we are not given anywhere, so we need to find it. Okay. The probability of B, we are given the probability of B 0, 0,2. We All substitute right. into the formula. Then we cross multiply because we need to find or make the okay. probability of A and B yes. subject of the formula. Okay. So it will be 0, 0,9 multiplied by 0, 0,2 which okay. makes 0, 0,9 multiplied by 0, 0,2 is 0, 0,18. Okay, thank you so much. I got it. Thank you very much. Any question? We were on exercise two. 
okay if there are no questions i had several exercises i'm going to skip exercise one but you can do exercise one on your own time. You can come back to this video and pause this and do exercise one. And also exercise two. They come from the same data. If you look at exercise two, let's say in the, this is one of the exam questions that they will give you. You must see that they haven't completed the whole table. They are missing information missing 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 you need to complete the whole table in order for you to calculate the probability of np or boy which is neuropsychologist and boy and using the formula the probability of neuropsychologist plus the probability of a boy minus the probability of neuropsychologist and a boy formula to calculate this but in order for you to calculate this, you will have to find the totals and complete the whole table. Okay. This is your exercise for now. If we unpack this exercise, they use the contingency table. And this is, I think it comes from your, ex your assignment question. Um, you can also pause the video later on and work through them. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So here they're asking you to find only one incorrect statement, but all questions that they are asking here, it's probability statement <clears throat> that you need to calculate. Remember, they are giving you events. So you will always have to calculate the probability by taking the event. If it's a simple event, you will take the simple event value and divide it by the grand total. So the first one, they're asking you to calculate the simple event of social media. The second one they are saying is your complement of social media, is it the same as the probability of traditional media, which is 0 0.25? You will have to find that. You can either calculate the probability of traditional media, and find the complement of that because the complement of traditional media is social media, which they have stated it there. Is it the same? Number three, they are asking you what is the probability of a simple event for celebrity? So you also need to calculate that simple event. You can use the marginal event or you can use the totals to calculate this. All of them are simple events. And the last one is the probability of spot and star. So this is simple event, spot and star, which is that column. So all of them, they are asking you to calculate the simple event and validate and find the one that is incorrect. The other type of an example that or exercise that you will have in your assignment questions are like this. They also want only one, one incorrect answer. They have given you option number one, you need to calculate the joint event. When you calculate joint event of celebrity and show sh and uh, sports star, celebrity and sports star, you need to tell us if that is correct or incorrect the probability of a joint event of celebrity and social media, celebrity and social media. The next one, you need to calculate the probability of a joint event of celebrity and traditional media, which is celebrity and social media. And remember, <clears throat> because these are joint event, this is the event satisfying the joint event divided by the total. So you will have to use that. <clears throat> and number four and number five, these are conditional probabilities. The first one, which is option number four, it's asking, what is the probability of a social media given that the person is a celebrity? <clears throat> 
So you're going to calculate that conditional probability, which is the joint event of social media and celebrity divided by the given probability, which is probability of celebrity. Option number five, the probability of social media given sports star. Also, the joint event of social media and sports star divided by given probability of spot star. And you will need to find the incorrect answer from there. And I think, let me leave it on exercise number four so that you can do this one. And we will, what time is it now? I don't have my time with me. I'll give you uh, two minutes to look at the statement. discuss just now. Okay. Uh, have you figured it out? Which one is the incorrect statement? I'm not going to give you the answers because this is your assignment questions. Um, so this first statement, option number one, is asking you to find the condition, the joint probability of celebrity and sports star. Can you find that? Is it able? Are you able to calculate it? Are you able to find? Can celebrity and sports star happen at the same time? No, they can't. No, they can't. And therefore, it means they are 
mutually exclusive events. So when there are mutually exclusive events, the probability of a mutually exclusive event is equal to zero. It's equals to zero. Then the second one, they are asking you to find the probability of celebrity and social media, which means you need to use 1,800 because that is their joint event of celebrity and social media. Is it correct? I don't know because you need to calculate it. So event satisfying that divide by the sample space, which is 4,000. So I'm just going to write only one time. So that will be 8,000 or 1,800 divided by 4,000. And you should get the answer for that joint probability. The second or the third one, find the probability of celebrity and traditional, which is that one. I'm not going to do that. You will have to sort it out and find whether this is correct or incorrect. The last bit which are option number four and option number five. I'm only going to do one, which is option number four. Probability of social media, given that the person is a celebrity, it's given by the probability of social media and celebrity divided by the probability of celebrity, which then we need to find the probability of social media and celebrity, which is 1,800 1, divided by, because it's still an event, we need to divide that by 4,000. And we need to find the probability of, conditional probability of, uh, conditional probability, or oh sorry, the probability of celebrity, which is celebrity, which is that one day. So the probability of celebrity will be 2285 divided by 4,000, since they both are still event. In math, because this is a division, so we can still write it as 1,800 over 4,000 multiply. When it's a division, we can change the sign. And when we change the sign, we flip the second fraction. So therefore it means 4,000 comes to the top and 2,285 goes to the bottom. And when it's like that, in a mathematical way of doing things, then we say, 4,000 and 4,000 cancels out, and we are left with. We are left with 1,800 divided by 2,285, which then gives us the value of 1,800. Divide by two thousand zero comma seven nine zero comma seven nine. And why did I have to do that one? I didn't know that will be the answer. And you can do also option number five. We're looking for the incorrect statement. And you can stop there or you can validate all of the other options. Any question? We have five minutes. With that five minutes, just want to recap on what we did. And close off the session. So what we have done today, by the end of this session, you should be able to complete your assignment one questions and be ready to submit your assignment.
And what we've covered today, we looked at the basic concepts of uh, probabilities, such as the sample space, the events, contingency table, which are your type of visualization that you can use, like your contingency tables, your, your Venn diagram and your decision trees. And we looked at what a simple probability is and a joint probability is. We also covered the basic rules of probabilities, which includes the conditional probabilities, which are the probability of A or B. We also looked at when do events become mutually exclusive and when they are collectively exhaustive. We also looked at conditional probabilities, which included the multiplication rule and the independence. Because with the multiplication rule, you just crisscross because you are looking for the probability of A and B. And <clears throat> for independent event, if the conditional probability of A and B, um, if the conditional probability of A given B, then it will be the same as the probability of A because what happened to B has no bearing on what is happening to the probability of A. And that's all what we've covered today. And enjoy the rest of your session. And, and if we look at some of the formulas, or oh, I must just highlight this, some of the formulas that you will be using to answer the basic probabilities that you always need to remember is for uh, complement event, which is the probability of A will always be one minus the probability of a complement. And for additional rule, we all <clears throat> we use the probability of A or B. And remember, if and only if the event A and B are mutually exclusive, therefore then they can, the addition rule or the probability of A or B will just be the probability of A plus the probability of B. Um, what else? And Yes, and also for only if and only event A and B are independent, or they tell you that they are independent, then also the conditional probability of A given B will just be the probability of A. Or the probability, the conditional probability of B given A will just be the probability of B. But the joint, prob uh, joint probability of A and B for conditional probabilities if and only if the events are independent then the probability of a and b will be the probability of a times the probability of b or, or you can write it as the probability of b times the probability of a it means one and the same thing and that's it for today if you have any questions Me. Yeah, just one from me. Uh, in the exams, they don't give you these formulas, right? They do give you these formulas they in do. the exam. So, for example, let's say, because now there's, there's going to be a confusion. So, since you are writing online exam because of the COVID-19, these formulas are available to you to use because you have them in front of you in your in your study guides in everywhere. Your exams are not proctored, so it's some not nobody is watching what you are doing on your own spare time. So you have all the formulas, but let's say you go in, they change, you need to change and say, oh, your exam is written in November and it is a venue based. You need to go to Unisa Center and write your exam. Then you need to know the following formulas are only going to be given. That formula and that formula will definitely be given to you. Only those two formulas. The rest, you can derive them from using those formula. If you are given the conditional probability, you should be able to calculate the, the multiplication rule formula. You should know how to find the independent rule formula. The only other formula that they might give you is just the probability of A. They might say it's X over N because we also, at the later stage when we do the probabilities as well, uh, especially when we do um, <clears throat> some, 
some uh, later on in hypothesis testing and sampling distributions, we're going to be using some of these concepts again. So they will give you this formula <clears throat> that looks like this. Um, and they might also give you the formula for the joint probability. Remember that formula for the joint probability is just the joint probability for event satisfying the joint event divided by n, which is different to when <clears throat> the events are independent. You need to be very careful as well. So if events are independent, then we use this formula only for independent. Otherwise, the, the event satisfying event joint event divided by the sample space. So those are the only formulas you will get in the exam. You will not get the complement uh, formula in the exam. You need to know that uh, that is one minus the other event that you are given. Um, you will not be given the multiplication law or rule formula. You will need to know that it's the same. You will not be given the probability of B given A. You will only be given one way it says the probability of A and B. And you will also be given the probability of A or B, but they will not give you for independent event or sort of for mutually exclusive event where we know that the joint event is zero. They will not give you that. You just need to know that. Okay. Any other question? No questions? If there are no questions, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Please don't be strangers. If you need help with your assignment, there is WhatsApp. And there is my UNISA for us to engage, and I should be able to help you. And thank you, Johan, for posting on my UNISA. Last week I had challenges with logging onto my UNISA. I did see your comments. I will go through them and respond. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Don't be strangers. I'm here to help you, and I want to see you succeed and pass this module. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much.